Hello everybody, welcome to our mighty African history channel. Today, let's talk about the Igbo people of Nigeria during the transatlantic slave trade. So, on my earlier video, I mentioned Igbo being one of the most enslaved tribes in Africa. So stay here to find out how they were taken, where they were taken, and learn about their three historical kingdoms and the famous Olauda Equiano. So the Igbo people whose traditional territory is called the Bight of Biafra or Boni were actually among the most enslaved Africans during the transatlantic slave trade. An estimated 14.6% of all slaves were taken from the Bight of Biafra between 1650 and 1900. The Bight's major slaves were located in Boni and Calabar and they were mostly kidnapped during village raids. So, the journey for Igbo slaves often began in the ancient cave temple and that was located in Arochuku kingdom. During this period, there were actually three kingdoms. Kingdom 1 was called the Arochuku kingdom, which is the most interesting. Kingdom number 2 was called the Nri kingdom. And kingdom number 3 was the kingdom of independent Igbo states. So let's start with the Arochuku kingdom. Arochuku kingdom practiced a system of indentured servitude that was different from chattel slavery. So when the Europeans started coming to the Igbo territory, they had to find a way to defend themselves. So in order to get the weapons, Arochuku began to raid villages of other Igbo kingdoms. People would be captured regardless of gender and age, and so the slaves could have been originally farmers or even people who had committed petty crimes. Another way people were enslaved was through the divine oracle who resided in the cave temple uh, complex and that is in Arochuku kingdom. So, all Igbos practiced divination called Afa, but the kingdom of Arochuku was different because it was headed by a divine oracle who was in charge of making decisions for the king. So during this time, let's say if someone committed a crime or was in debt uh, or did something considered abomination, uh, they would be taken to the cave complex to face the oracle for sentencing. The oracle, who was also influenced by the demands of the European slave traders, would sentence these people even for petty crimes. Actually, the victims would be commanded to walk further into the cave so that the spirits could devour them, but in reality, they were taken to an opening to the other side and loaded directly on a waiting boat and were transported to the Americas. Kingdom number two, that is the Nri Kingdom, and Kingdom number three, that is the independent Igbo states, they did not practice slavery. So, slaves from Arochuku would flee from their kingdom and try to make it in other kingdoms in order to be set free. So it is said that Igbo people were known to be rebellious and some even considered committing suicide in order to avoid the slavery. Let's talk about the Igbo dispersal. The Igbo were dispersed to Barbados in large numbers and here comes our famous Olauda Equiano. He was a famous Igbo author abolitionist and ex-slave who was dropped in Barbados after being kidnapped from Nigeria at the age of 11. He arrived in Barbados. He was then father shipped to Virginia. At his time, 44% of the 90,000 Africans disembarking on the island between 1751 and 1775 were from the Bight and that means they were of the Igbo origin. Some were placed in Haiti, Jamaica and United States. 
here are the four facts you should actually know about the history of slavery in the Igbo tribe. Number one is that the Igbo people were among the most enslaved Africans during the transatlantic slave trade and most of them landing in the Caribbean islands of Haiti, Barbados and Jamaica. Number two, Olauda Equiano was an Igbo kidnapped from the bite at the age of 11 and ended up being a famous author who wrote of his slavery experiences and bought himself freedom. Number three, during the transatlantic slave trade, the Biafra had three kingdoms and that is the Nri Kingdom, Arochuku Kingdom and the independent Igbo states. And number four, the kingdom of Arochuku was headed by a divine oracle that actually made decisions for the king. So, hope you guys learned something from the video. Also, make sure you watch the 10 most enslaved African tribes in the transatlantic slave trade. Click the link in the description or on the top right of your screen right now. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.